Chapter 14 Quantum Mechanical Postulates Section 14.4 Quantum Mechanical Postulate 4 Postulate 4 states that if a quantum mechanical system has a wave function psi, then the expectation value of the observable O corresponding to quantum mechanical operator O is given by this equation. Over here we have the expectation value of the observable O. The notation is this lowercase o enclosed in a pair of brackets. On the right hand side we have a fraction. We have this integral on top, the integral of psi star times O psi d tau. And O psi is this O operator being applied to psi. On the bottom we have the integral of psi star psi d tau. Psi star is the complex conjugate of psi. If psi is real, then psi star is equal to psi. If psi is already normalized, then the integral of psi star times psi is just 1. Then the expectation value of the observable O is equal to the integral of psi star times O psi d tau. When you evaluate this kind of integrals, you need to apply the operator O to psi first and then do a multiplication between psi star and O psi and then finally integrate the product over the entire space. Here's an example if the wave function of a system is sine kx from negative a to positive a and zero everywhere else then the expectation value of the momentum of the system is this. Over here this px enclosed in a pair of bracket is the expectation value of the momentum of this particle and again we have two integrals on the bottom it's the integral of psi star psi d tau on top that's the integral of psi star multiplied by over here this is the momentum operator being applied to the wave function psi now if uh, this uh, uh, psi is already normalized then the bottom is simply 1 but I don't think this uh, sine kx is normalized so we need to integrate the top and then the bottom and then do a division now let's look at the integral on the top the integral of psi star multiplied by px psi is this I replaced psi star with sine kx psi is also sine kx. Uh, this is because we have a real function here. And then we need to apply this px to psi. px is the momentum operator. This operator is negative i h bar d over dx. We apply this momentum operator to sine kx and the result is negative i h bar times k times cosine kx and then we integrate a constant times sine kx and cosine kx but I also want to show you a trick of doing this kind of integrals well if you look at this expression we have dx here and dx on the bottom so really they can cancel and then all we have is negative i h bar times the differential of sine kx. We can take negative i h bar out of integral like this and then we have to integrate sine kx d sine kx. Well we can just mentally do a variable substitution or we'll set z to be sine kx. You're integrating z d z. That's one half z squared that's why you see this one half sine kx squared over here and x is from negative a to positive a so if you plug in positive a and negative a well you'll just get the same result they cancel so this integral is just zero 
The expectation value of the momentum of this system is simply zero. But we we didn't even compute the integral on the bottom. Well, we don't have to because on top we have a zero, so on the bottom, whatever value you get, zero over that value is going to be zero. So we're going to say the expectation value of the momentum of the system with the wave function of sine x is simply zero. And we do expect this kind of uh, result. It is zero because we learned sine kx can be written as a linear combination of e to the power of i k x and e to the power of negative i k x. The former has a momentum of k h bar. The latter has a momentum of negative k h bar. And it's 50-50 chance. So the expectation value is k h bar times 50%. Plus negative kh bar times 50%. It should be zero. An arbitrary state can be expressed as a linear combination of multiple eigenfunctions of the operator O. So usually, if we have a arbitrary function psi, we can express this as the sum of ci psi i. Ci is just a coefficient. Psi i is one of the eigenfunctions of the quantum mechanical operator. The physical meaning of this ci squared is the probability of finding the system in the i-th eigenstate. That means with this psi sub i eigenfunction. If psi and psi sub i are already normalized, then the average value of probability O is simple. Uh, there's no calculus. It's just the sum of the probability times the corresponding value. So it's just we have a certain probability of finding a eigenvalue, which is O sub i, and the probability is C sub i squared. Now here's an example. The wave function of the electron in hydrogen may be a linear combination of several eigenfunctions. Here's just one example. It's possible for the hydrogen in the hydrogen uh, for the electron in the hydrogen atom to have this kind of wave function, 0.8 times the 1s orbital minus 0.6 times 3p orbital. What's the physical meaning of this? Well, if you have a wave function like this, this electron is in the 1s orbital and 3p orbital at the same time. If you really want to see, you know, whether this electron is in the L1s orbital or 3p orbital, you have to make a measurement. When you make a measurement, 64% chance the electron is in the 1s orbital. 36% chance this electron is in the 3p orbital. It's just because when we square the coefficient over here, we get 64%, this one 36%. What if you are about to measure the energy of this electron? Well, again, it's going to give you the energy of the 1s orbital with 64% chance. It might give you the 3p orbital energy with 36% chance. The 1s orbital has an energy of negative one half atomic unit of energy. The energy of 3p orbital is negative one eighteenth atomic unit. One atomic unit is about 2625.5 kilojoule per mole. So if you really want to convert it to kilojoule per mole, you can, but we don't have to. We can just use atomic unit right here to compute the expectation value of the energy of this electron with 64% chance in the 1s orbital and 36% chance in the 3p orbital. All we need to do is we have the probability of having negative one half atomic unit, 36 probability of having negative 1 over 18 atomic unit. We sum it up, we get negative 0.34 atomic unit energy. 
All right, this is the expectation value of the energy of the electron. However, if you really want to measure the energy of the electron, well, you're not going to get negative 0.34. You can only get the eigenvalues. That means you can either get negative half or negative 1 over 18. It's never going to be negative 0.34. Again, it has to be negative half or negative 1 over 18. The electron will have to collapse into a wireless electron or 3p electron when you try to measure its energy. Again, it's probabilistic. There are two possible outcomes, negative one half with this much chance or negative one over 18 with this much chance. But I do want to emphasize the expectation value is negative 0.34. So when do we have this? Well, experimentally, if you have this kind of system with a hydrogen in both the YS orbital and 3P orbital with 64, 36 probability, and then you can somehow prepare a million such identical systems and measure their energy. About 64 of this a million uh, hydrogen atoms well, give you negative one half. Thirty-six percent of the one million measurements of the one million identical systems will give you negative one over eighteen, and then you take the average. That's going to be negative point three four. Now let's look at example problem fourteen point three point one. The wave function of a particle in the one-dimensional world is this. Uh, 0.6 times e to the power of i k x minus 0.8 times e to the power of negative i k x. N is just the normalization factor. We have this N here to ensure the integral of the squared modulus of psi is 1. Now let's look at the expectation value of the momentum of this system. The general equation for the expectation value is this. The expectation value of O is the integral of psi star times O psi divided by the integral of psi star times psi. Now let's evaluate the expectation value of the momentum of this system. We plug in the expression of psi here and over here this is actually after we apply the px operator to psi. So remember px is negative i h bar delta over delta x. All right, when you apply this Px to this, uh, because there's a negative sign here, uh, this sign becomes positive because negative times another negative, it becomes positive. So on top, we have this expression. There is a cage bar constant. I took it out of the integral. On the bottom, we have this expression. And then we have two terms times two terms on top, two terms times two terms on the bottom. So we just do some algebra of complex functions. We have this, we have this. And um, well, somehow if you know that e to the power of i theta is cosine theta plus i times sine theta, we can do a conversion from this, a linear combination of i k x and negative i k x to here and from here to here. So really the combination of these two exponential functions can be expressed as a sine function. The linear combination of these two can be expressed as a cosine function. Now we have this. And now if we look at these two integrals, uh, on top we have uh, minus 0 0.28 uh, and then over this uh, sine function, look, this integral is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So the integral of this term is much greater than the integral of this sine x. Similarly, the integral of 1 is much greater than the integral of cosine x. Therefore, we can just obtain this kind of equation. On top and on the bottom, we have similar integrals of a constant. Well, the division results in negative 0.28, and then we have this number. All right, and then the expectation value of the momentum of this system is negative 0.28 kh bar. 
there is an easy way to do this. Over here, uh, we have a momentum of cage bar. Over here, negative cage bar, right? So we have 36% of cage bar and 64% of uh, negative cage bar. So we have 0 0.36 minus 0 0.64. We get this anyway in the end. Another thing I want to emphasize, how do we integrate this from negative infinity to positive infinity? Actually, we do not do that directly. We replace each infinity with, for example, L as the limit from negative L to positive L. And then on top, you have negative 0.28 times 2L. On the bottom, you have 1 times 2L. And then 2L and 2L cancel because it appears on the top and the bottom. And then we have this. So this is simply a mathematical trick to evaluate this kind of integrals.